All right, guys, let's jump right into this. He is the content manager for Bongino Report. He's written several books debunking, liberalized, and exposing top Democrats. His latest book, however, is the one that we are concerned with. It is entitled The Man Behind the Curtain, Inside the Secret Network of George Soros. Welcome, Matt Palumbo. Candace, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so grateful you were able to join last second. I'm kind of obsessed now with learning more about George Soros. Obviously, he's been on the radar for a very long time. But I just feel that we are kind of reaching a pinnacle in this country. And every time something terrible happens, you can trace it back to his dollars. And so I just I want to really start with his origin story and where he came from, knowing that he controls an entire network of fact checkers. And every mm-hmm. time people get close to his origin story, they say, no, 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 that's not true. It's not real. We're the mm-hmm. fact checkers that he's paying. And that's not right. So tell us about his childhood and his upbringing. Right. Well, he grew up in, in Hungary and was there when the Nazis invaded. And, you know, one of the great ironies of Soros is, you know, we live in the everything is racist era of politics, and that's the pejorative against any center right opinion. Um, with Soros, it's everything is anti Semitic. And Soros, for instance, can write a Wall Street Journal op ed saying, I'm going to back all these left wing prosecutors. But then if you or I were to report on it, then it becomes anti Semitic because he happens to be Jewish. Well, uh, he's, first of all, not a practicing Jew and did a lot of things that if any other person would do, I, I think, or anyone less powerful did as a child, would be criticized for it. So there is a, a sort of now infamous 60 Minutes interview he did. And, you know, the, the Nazis, when they would invade some of these areas, they would set up what they're called Jewish councils. And they would try to recruit local Jews from the population to carry out their bidding against other Jews. And, you know, I, I think a lot of the Jews that participated may have, well, they were either forced to do it or may have believed they would have been spared from the Nazi brutality. But Soros was recruited into that. Um, and when he was asked about it in 60 Minutes, the the host, Steve Croft, asked him about it and gives him the out and says, like, you know, well, surely you were forced to do it and it's not something you'd want to do and it must keep you up at night. And Soros very memorably gave this very, very cold reaction saying, no, it was something or, you know, if I didn't do it, someone else would have anyway. So who cares was kind of the reaction and really had no it was just the coldness of the response. And. Mm-hmm. If he had just spun it and said, hey, there was a gun to my head, no one would have even minded the interview. But it was it was weird that he didn't even have the self-awareness to lie. Um, Now, that interview you mentioned, if you you know, Twitter's community notes actually does a decent job of fact checking. But even that video is getting fact checked by the community notes wrongly as out of context and all this. And that's sort of the, the defense is that that clip has been taken out of context. Well, surprise, surprise, Soros's father wrote an autobiography. And in the autobiography, he talks about his son's upbringing and his son's uh, participation with the Nazis and said it was something he tried to dissuade George from doing and something that he seemed to enjoy doing. So uh, no his own father, way. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, I yeah. want to slow that down yes. because I did not know this. So we mm-hmm. did show that clip uh, yep. on a couple of episodes ago on Wednesday's episode, I believe. And you are correct. There's no way to take it out of context. He essentially correct. says to him, you are working under a Hungarian officer who was tasked with going to conduct inventory on Jewish people's homes, uh, Jewish people that were forced to leave. And he very much, as you said, gives him an out and says, but, you know, I'm sure you're stuck with guilt. (laughs) You're stuck with guilt and you're rocking guilt about this. And he really nonchalantly and very plainly says, absolutely not. Yeah, I was a child and it is it's whatever. It would have been somebody else. It's not a big deal. And it's very weird. It's very bizarre not to say something along the lines of, I didn't really understand it when I was a child, but in retrospect, this was really horrific. And I feel sad for these individuals. And I wish I had known. But what you're saying now is that his father, and do, what is his father's name? Do you, do you know off the top so of your head? His father's name, yes, Tibidar Soros. And the book is called Masquerade. And the, the subtitle is like, uh, I can't remember the exact subtitle, but it's something along the lines of like, you know, inside Soros's, George Soros's father's, you know, what, whatever. But that's that's the gist of it. And um, throughout all of this, so the, the reason um, Soros's father sent George around this time to live with a guy that was only known as the Godfather, um, but he's the one who gave Soros a, a fake Christian identity during that time mm. and probably is the only reason Soros is alive today. Now, not, you know, it's been many, many decades, obviously, since then, I mean, almost a century, 
Soros, not once in his public work, writings, speeches, has mentioned this guy, has thanked him for what he did in saving his life. Um, we only found out about the guy's identity after he passed away, and I think it was 2010 or 2011. So uh, save the guy's life, uh, gets no thanks whatsoever, dies pretty much anonymously. That's really interesting. And you said that that person's name is public in the public sphere? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes. It's, uh, you know, the, I, I'm drawing a blank on it, but the Daily Mail, I believe, was the one who, who broke the news. And I obviously it's cited in the uh, in Because the I, I have this theory, and in, in just looking at everything that he's done, it, it seems very bizarre that he has such hatred for mm -hmm. really the people that liberated him, right? <laughs> if, mm -hmm. if, if he yeah. believed that the Nazis were so backwards and were so awful, how could he then spend his life having such contempt for Americans? Why would mm -hmm. he be trying to foster the end of America? Why would he be wanting the cities well, to be crime-filled yeah. and releasing criminals onto the street via his district attorneys? It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. And so I said to myself, is it plausible that he was actually sympathetic to the Nazis because he was taken care of and he was protected and maybe he saw them through a different vein? I mean, your childhood, anybody's childhood, has a very serious impact on their, on their lives, the way that you think. It's very difficult to get over the lessons that you learned from your childhood. And I'm wondering if he came out of that and was at all sympathetic to the Jewish people or if he was more sympathetic to the people that took care of him throughout that uh, horrible tragedy of the Nazis occupying Hungary. Yeah, I mean, that's actually one of the things I get asked a lot is like, what motivates this guy? Because we can, you know, the defund the police, the rogue prosecutors, it's a controlled experiment in a certain type of political policy, and it is unquestionably a failure. So it's like, well, Soros is a data-driven guy, his background's in finance, he's made billions of all people, he's probably better at analyzing data than I am, So, which means he knows the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the Occam's razor answer is the simplest one, which is he's just an evil guy. And what the exact you know reason was, we, we don't exactly know, but it just cannot, he's not like your, your neighborhood liberal who like wants librarians to get paid more. He, he legitimately has horrible ideas and there's no... There's no working theory behind why his ideas would work. Like I, I sound like I'm going to sound like my old economics teacher in college. But whenever you have an idea, she always would ask me like, "Well, you have to show me why you think this chain of events would be set off to cause this." So in, in his rogue prosecutors, like, okay, we cut police funding, then what? H how does anything get better? What is the process? And then you know when they tried out things like, "Oh, we're going to boost mental health services and social services," and I go, "Okay, name one." And how does it get implemented? And OK, you want it better mental health. I think the new Chicago mayor said he's going to invest in mental health. Um, do we expect the Bloods and the Crips to sit down for, for, for couples therapy? I think it's a bit unlikely. So, uh, you know, you just just uh, it's sort of the Matt Walsh. Just ask one very simple question. And that alone is enough to uproot really the entire uh, ideology. But it's. It's sad that we are really beyond a place uh, in the debate where, where these sort of things even matter. We are in sort of a post-truth era of politics. And the fact that he's still funding these people goes to show. I mean, just two nights ago, I think it was, he, he scored the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Uh, that was his latest local victory. And he has not slung down at all. And, and it has had the most success there. All right, guys, that is all the time that we have for today. I hope that you enjoy that interview as much as I do. It really just is a beginning of what needs to be a much larger discussion regarding George Soros. Don't forget that we have some really exciting, exclusive content coming up on Daily Wire Plus. A shot in the dark. I cannot wait to bring this to the Daily Wire family. So be sure to click the link in the description and subscribe right now. We'll see you guys next time.